Hey guys, Ruby here with Unorthodox Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about keeping rainbow trout in an aquarium. So, rainbow trout are freshwater, cold water fish native to uh, the Rocky Mountains and other North American fast moving rivers and streams, areas like that. Um, so what I did was I got three fingerlings here on eBay um, that I am growing out somewhat in this 55 gallon. So um, consider this my little trout experiment. So here is one of my trout here. I've got three total. Um, one kind of uh, hangs out up there too. This one always likes to ride the current. And then I've got this little guy who likes to uh, hide behind that rock. Um, housing trout can be tricky. There are four um, basic requirements that you should follow. As you can see, this guy here is swimming against the current. Fast moving water is required for these guys to thrive. Um, they should not be stagnant. They do not do well like that. Um, it also provides them with plenty of oxygen, which, which this fish needs uh, in particular. And um, I like to mimic the uh, natural environment also that they live in. Uh, I just really believe it helps them thrive that much more. Uh, plenty of swimming room is also needed. Um, now, a lot of people use power heads in their trout tanks uh, to create that current. And uh, therefore, if you do grow out a few fingerlings in something as small as a 55, something that provides a fast enough current should be sufficient with this size of a tank so that they can keep up and train themselves to ride that current per se. So um, some sort of power head, wave maker, what have you, uh, is also required. Um, the third thing is clean cold water. Um, uh, well, cold water, we'll say, is the third thing. Um, a lot of people do use chillers. Uh, the temperature really shouldn't exceed 60 degrees Fahrenheit. This one I keep at 58, which has uh, not seemed to stress them out. It has seemed sufficient as uh, up to this point. And also important is the cleanliness and quality of the water. Um, I would recommend at least a 50% to double filtration capacity for these trout uh, due to their kind of dirty nature. Also, um, try to avoid overfeeding and overstocking to keep their water quality good. Um, you know, they these uh, the natural waters in the brooks, rivers, and streams they live in, um, it's always moving and it's always very clear, clean, and pristine. Um, a great environment for these fish. Now, as I mentioned before, a few fingerlings growing out in a 55 such as this um, is uh, sufficient. Uh, when they get larger, now, first of all, um, a full-grown wild trout can get up to 20 to 30 inches long. Uh, these being captive bred rainbow trout, they will only reach about uh, maybe around a foot to 15 inches is their uh, max length being bred in captivity. Um, when they are larger, you know, a fast moving currented uh, pond or pool is more suitable for them. I also mentioned before the power head with the current. Now, uh, just kind of the backstory on these particular trout, they came in a little worse for wear. They were shipped on the 4th, and they didn't get here till the, the 9th, or whatever, this past Saturday. So uh, they were a little weak, low on oxygen. Um, I made the mistake of putting them in uh, with a pretty high flow, and it just kind of 
blew them around. You know, after I acclimated them, I let them go and uh, didn't really consider that they had been sitting uh, in a stagnant bag of water for a while. So what I had to do was uh, I put on a very low flow and uh, I did the water training, you know, where you pick them up, kind of hold them into the flow gently, accustom them and their swim bladder to the current. So um, that ended up working very well and they ended up thriving. Uh, what I'm going to do now is since they came in a little weak, I'm going to turn on my second power head to increase the flow and uh, we'll show you how that goes. Okay, so I have three power heads in there. The smaller one I'm not operating, but uh, one of them is on and you can see the pace he's swimming at. Now I'm just going to plug in the other one. Get them used to a little stronger current. All right, that one's plugged in now. All right, he seems to be accustomed and doing okay with the increased water flow. And this one too is just kind of going with the flow. Literally. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be doing good. And this one that hangs out up there, I think he, uh, you know, kind of is maybe still trying to figure out the flow or, you know, he goes down there and he eats and stuff. So I'm not really worried about this point about him being up there. As far as scaping the tank itself, I believe it's very important to mimic a natural environment for any fish, um, especially a trout. Uh, you know, I've done a couple unorthodox scapes like that, uh, hamster tube sorority and a couple other neat things like that where uh, the things in the environment weren't really crucial to the fish's well-being. But in this case, you know, obviously along with the tank conditions, water requirements, flow, temperature, things like that, I believe the scape is important for these trout. Um, things like river rock, wood, uh, this like flagstone brick, stuff like that, um, I believe can be very beneficial for these guys and uh, help them thrive overall. Now, another pretty important thing for these guys is varying diet. Uh, these guys were trained on carnivore pellets, so that's what I've been feeding them since I got them. However, yesterday I picked up some smaller rosy minnows. Um, I threw them in quarantine for a while and I'm going to uh, attempt to feed them to these guys today for you. Um, see if they kind of get the hang of something smaller. They are kind of at an awkward stage uh, for feeding live as far as their size goes. They're only between like, uh, you know, maybe around four inches. But um, they, uh, they do appreciate a varying diet of carnivore or live foods. Um, so I'm going to try the rosies with these guys today and also do some pellet feeding, um, as well. So let's check that out. Okay. This will be interesting with the current too. Let's throw some pellets in there to start. And I just put them in under the flow there and then the current pushes them. There we go. We're eating some. Oh, and the one up in the corner is able to get some, too. See, he's eating, so I'm not too worried. And then the other one comes up to eat. Now, I've got a few rosies that I picked up. Kind of scared. Let's just move the lid. Let's see what they do. Oh! Definitely chasing him. Oh, did he get one? They kind of get pushed by the current. Oh, there's the...
no. Oh. Kind of want to catch them. Those rosies got to get used to the flow, too. Big. That's a kind of a bigger one. It's kind of being inspected more than eaten. Let's see here. Who knows, maybe they will cohabitate peacefully. Like I said, this is all an experiment. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe they can cohabitate and the trout can get them when they're bigger or something. Or maybe, you know, they just need to oh, get used to the concept of live food. Uh, these are smaller than regular crappie minnows, so, um, you know, I figured that'd be a good place to start for them. And maybe seeing the prey around would help stimulate them to go after live food. Because, you know, right now they're pellet trained, like I mentioned before. Lastly, I want to mention that lids for these guys are a must. Uh, right now what I have, I do a lot of these DIY lids with like, um, you know, the 48 inch uh, closet shelf things like this. Um, I covered it with plastic wrap so it wouldn't, uh, so they wouldn't be able to actually get out. I'm waiting for a screen lid to come from Amazon, hopefully within the next couple days. So uh, that's a very, very important component to have as a part of your trout aquarium. Well guys, thanks for coming to hang out again. This has been Ruby with Unorthodox Aquatics. And uh, I appreciate it. Subscribe if you like. This has been a brief little tutorial on how to keep rainbow trout in an aquarium. You guys have a good night. Talk to you later. Bye.